right. Hello, everybody. We are back with Jonathan from Fun City Editions. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming on again. Hello. Hello, everybody, and uh, thanks for having me on again, Ryan. I, I think that uh, for the label interviews, I think you're the first one that I brought back on twice. And I, I did that purposefully because it seems like Fun City, the last time we talked, I think it was in May. It might have been like very early May or late April of 2022. And Fun City just seems to have taken a life of its own in a completely different path since then. And I may be speaking out of turn, but I feel like uh, before then, people like respected Fun City in a way that was obviously like, hey, these are genuinely great movies. I, I like that I'm able to support them. But something about the releases since that date have kind of, especially in, in my channel, lit mm. everybody on fire. Like, uh, really? Yeah, uh, we're yeah. going to get into some details on, on the four because I really want to hear your side of some of these films. But uh, the biggest one, I think, for this channel has been Natural Enemies. Um, okay. We have oh, cool. uh, we have we have a Patreon, and, and through that we have a Discord where we have like our own little hangout group that we can talk in all the time. And Natural Enemies seems to be one that I I don't think we've gone more than a week since release without bringing it up at least once or twice, genuinely. And I I, I wouldn't say that and lie to you. It has been an impactful film, and uh, we, we've talked about how it's made people feel, and hearing the way that people have looked at it and been emotionally impacted has been something that just, I, I've been grateful to see that you've been able to put it out there. So first of all, thank you for bringing that to the world. Well, thank you for talking about it and <laughs> talking about it so much, uh, and it's really, uh, it's really special because that was a movie that was out of circulation i mean people there right. was a vhs rip on on youtube but like it just really hadn't been uh, treated properly and thankfully jeff canoe the director and writer of the film is still around and he is he is tickled like whenever i send him reviews nice. and he's just like you know he says things like you're my sunshine and you know <laughs> stuff like that he's like can you he said to me one time, the funniest thing he said to me was, he's like, can you release this Blu-ray in like 1994? You know, <laughs> get, get me out of, get me out of movie jail. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a funny guy though. If you saw the interview, some of that definitely peeks through in the interview yeah. with him, just how funny he is. Um, I, you, you can tell he's the guy who ended up going on to make comedies later on. Right. After National Enemies. Cause he is, he is genuinely like just like he's just one of those dudes you're talking to him he's just always he's always on he's got a quip he's always got a quip ready and there's another one you know for the two two lines down you know right so i i love watching natural enemies and now the next time i see it it'll be with the context of the guy that made this called jonathan is sunshine and that those just don't jive together at all <laughs> <laughs> that's true well also people said well also like this movie being released by a company called Fun City is also very, uh, some, something about that is kind of funny too. Um, so yeah, that's been, that was awesome, awesome to do and thank, and it feels like um, also just that, that was the one time we did, that the one time I, I think that we've done something where uh, there wasn't really optimal materials left, like we were really right. working from the as far as anyone knows like the best surviving element which just so happens to be a print a 35 millimeter print that was deposited at the library of congress for copyright purposes so that's what you, you know back then it was still kind of pre-video so it was sort of common practice for uh, producers or uh, studios to to uh, deposit a print in the library of congress and Thankfully, Natural Enemies was made uh, when it was, and thankfully somebody somebody did that. So, we uh, on this channel we are a huge proponent for archiving art like this, for worrying about lost media, and the big thing, especially with Natural Enemies, is is bringing things back that haven't seen a release literally in decades and potentially ever on home video. Uh, with other labels like Imprint in Australia doing that for way more than anybody ever expected i think because i don't know if you pay attention to them but it seems like every month they're announcing two or three and they're like worldwide debut on home video which is astonishing but for natural mm -hmm. enemies uh 
it is amazing to see a piece like that that is so emotionally affecting just under trying to like grasp how it would be overlooked for so long because it, it seems so it, it's unique in a very like harrowing way obviously but it seems like one that people would want to protect so i'm grateful again like it, it was made when it was it, it's just sad for how many that we could think about that we've lost in that time as well well i mean this movie's not even this movie's it's only 40 something years right. old uh no i think it just has to do with uh how it was made um that's part of the reason why it yeah. hasn't really been available it's just because of is a independent movie and the distribution was was uh, you know companies that are not in existence anymore and you know people just and jeff canoe wasn't in control of the movie since it you know came out he kind of gave those rights up at way back then so um he never even thought anyone would do anything with it. And he had no idea right. about the, the film elements or anything. I mean, yeah. So it's just, it, you know, it was just fortunate that, uh, that there's something, there was something that was preserved and it's really, you know, again, just kind of by chance. So, cause there's other stories about the other materials for the movie, which are really not good. <laughs> so um, that that seems to be the case with a lot of these films that have been put out by some of these boutiques over the last couple of years. Just uh, amazing restoration work for something that's found in somebody's closet or uh, some random, literally like dumpster discoveries on some of these things. So yeah, I well, well, walking the edge that yeah. negative was one of those where it was, you know, in somebody, you know, that was like in the producer's garage or something, you know, it was not, it was not stored in, <laughs> you know, proper climate controlled right. uh, conditions or anything like that. So now it is. Grateful we found it and uh, grateful for your entire catalog so far. Uh, like I said, the last time we talked in May, I, th I think Coca-Cola Kid had just been announced last time we spoke. So nobody had been able to ingest that yet even. Um, okay. Since then, uh, I'm, I may be wrong with the timeline. Uh, since then, it seems like every single time you announce something, it lights the world on fire. Uh, one of the ones, I think the first one announced after we talked was Heartbreakers. And okay, okay. Uh, this seemed to be the first step in like, holy hell, Fun City got that one. And everybody discussing it online. Um, I, if I remember, I didn't this play recently at the New Bev too, or is about to in, in Hollywood. Do you remember that? Yeah, it, it did. We it played in September, uh, two nights at the New Bev, and uh, Bobby Roth, the, the uh, writer and director, was there. I did a Q and A with him both nights. Yep. It was a lot of yep. fun. It was a great audience both both nights, and it was a thrill for him because he hadn't seen it um, projected probably since wow. 1984, 85, and no, and nobody's really screened it. Um, so, and he lives three blocks from the new bed. So that was cool. <laughs> he just you know, could roll out of bed or whatever right. and walk over there. So, you know, it's amazing. I didn't know you were there. I, <laughs> I just saw it advertised and I've got a friend that lives fairly close and goes there many times a month. So, I mean, yeah. random happenstance that I asked about that, but uh, now that you're there, I mean, curious, how did, how did it play over? How did everybody like it? Well, it, it seemed like it, it seemed like it was received really pretty well i mean people stuck around a lot of people stuck around for the q a after and good. yeah i mean it seemed like it was it was a good you know it was a it was a good sized crowd uh both nights definitely the you know um new bev does you know new bev's it, it, i've when i've been there anyway which is i don't live i live in new york so i'm not right. there a lot but i mean there's usually really good crowds when i've been there so i was excited to be able to have the movie play there and it tends to be like definitely i think a lot of people hadn't seen the movie before and so it's just cool for someone like bobby um to be able to see the movie not only with um people that saw it or or were around when it came out but a lot of younger people too but the other cool thing is since it's la um you get just just very casually you're gonna be like able to see oh there's uh so and so from the movie who was in right. the movie there's you find out there's the costume designer there's the editor there's the assistant director um there's the casting person because they all these people it's a company town so every you know so many people live nearby 
So you don't really get that anywhere else except L.A., and that's really cool. So that happened with Heartbreakers. There were so many people there that worked on the movie who were just there. I mean, there were like three or four cast members there the first night, uh, and there was, um, like I said, a lot of behind-the-scenes people. It was really cool. People were really supportive. It, it showed how it showed how much Bobby's, you know, was loved and and respected yeah. by by his peers and people wanted to come out and, and, and support him. So it was a really, yeah, it was, it was really cool. That's super neat for you, man. That's, that's fantastic to hear. I, I love stuff like this. And then uh, seeing somebody experience something like that for the first time, especially in person or even, you know, reliving a film that they worked on 37 years ago has to be amazing for some of those people. It's, it's lovely that we're getting these restorations for, for people that can still see their work before they don't get a chance to. It's nice. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And and we've been uh fortunate that for especially I feel like in this uh last year, it definitely feels like uh, we've done a number of films where um the filmmakers are alive and you know, we had some great like the Heartbreakers and the Natural Enemies discs both have uh the, the director interviews. I'm really proud of those um on both of those discs and those were a lot of fun to do and uh you know i was able to interview both guys uh yeah. directly and and both told me and you know just the fact that both filmmakers were you know told me you know that they really appreciated how those how those pieces turned out um and you know which is cool because those guys are both like filmmakers editors you know jeff canoe is a is you know outside of being a director and a writer he came up as an editor so when he's like oh yeah. you did a really good job putting that whole thing together because we talked for like three hours that's yeah. why it ended up being a a two-part interview on that disc because it just got it was so long but he had so many good stories i just didn't want to i didn't want to there was just stuff i just felt like oh we can we'll make this work no and anyway just to have him watch the whole thing and tell right. me that he was okay with it i was like you know or that more that that he liked it I, you know was was very gratifying and that's that's the thing with these releases these are either first time releases for a film for the most part or legitimately like definitive releases this will likely never be topped and to see that amount of respect being paid to uh you know work by lynn ramsey or work featuring big name i mean th this last one that you put out you've got multiple jeff bridges films in the catalog now that's that's pretty fantastic well yeah that's that no that's a, that's pretty cool i mean i'm i'm definitely we have multiple that cutter's way is the second jeff bridges movie but also the second yvonne passer movie right. we had we had born to win earlier um and that's the case where you know of course we missed yvonne passer by not that much cuz he right. didn't die that long ago um so yeah um uh yeah very cool to to have we have still less than 20, 20 i think we still have we still have less than 20 titles in the catalog but uh having a couple of jeff bridges movies is 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 fun yeah i'm i'm, I'm proud of that uh friend of the channel uh and podcast they live by film has spoken to you twice now as well so anybody that wants to hear more of jonathan's thoughts on that i'll link that in the description below but uh some of these other ones uh obviously have to bring up married to the mob is one that people seem to be really attaching themselves to and i don't know how much you pay attention online i know that you've been on like the blu-ray.com forums and seen you some interacting some other places but they they seem to really, really enjoy this one. And I don't know what it about the title, but it is so, so interesting that we have these wide array of genres from you. And like I, we talked about last time, they all feel sort of cohesive. They feel very Jonathan. And these last four, are, it kind of like leveled it up for me. And I'm curious, does it feel like there's any added pressure over the last year to keep putting out just these more amazing and impactful titles? Because it seems like, you you just keep kind of stepping up the game. Well, I mean, there's always pressure. I mean, I don't know about pressure to come up with more impactful titles, but yeah, I mean, I've been certainly the last few things we released, it's been really, they've been all like some of our biggest, most popular yeah. uh, titles. And, you know, and yeah, you, as you mentioned, there are like different, 
they're diverse. They're not all the same type of film. So that's very encouraging. There's definitely pressure, yeah, to find, to, to have more stuff in the pipeline. And then there's the pressure of, of um, you know, getting getting the work done on each of those and trying to match up the right people for extra features. And yeah, I mean, there's definitely pressure to try to, yeah, keep, keep finding things that feel like they somehow fit the, the MO of the brand, like whatever that is. Uh, and also have the, those other qualities like, Oh, you know, they, if they haven't really been done before, I mean, that's always a really nice thing. We try, I try to have, but you know, as you mentioned, you showed Cutter's Way and Married to the Mob, like those have, those have come out before. Um, so it's not always the case, but you know, I mean, they've come out on Blu-ray before, but um, yeah, definitely trying to keep getting things that people are going to be really excited about. And, and, the, and, and I mean, I would say that the thing, the thing that's been really, the most encouraging um, general development uh, or what have you throughout the whole history of the label has been just that at the same time that it's really hard to define what the label does or like what kind of movies yeah. we put out because I can't even really <laughs> right. uh, e express it succinctly. Um, the fact that people do seem to get that there's some kind, like you mentioned, there's some kind of cohesion and the fact that people and the, and the fact that people have been open to, I mean, frankly, a lot of the stuff that we've put out have been things that were available to every other boutique label uh, around uh, for a long time. And they weren't done because that they were deemed not 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 in every case and i can't speak for every label right. record, but on a general level a lot of the things that we've done weren't released in the past by other labels because it didn't fit their it didn't fit their um uh either their brand or what their what their uh goals identity or something yeah well or identity or or it didn't or it was not it wasn't they weren't seen as films that made sense business wise right. either so the fact that that some of these movies which are difficult like i mean something as you know as dark and grim as natural enemies you know or um just things that are or or things like uh like jeremy from the, our first round of releases that was a movie that, you know, the MG, from the MGM catalog, which has been, you know, mined by every label for years times. <laughs> and nobody. And I always loved I mean, that was a movie that I always loved, but yeah. it wasn't released because it, it I think it was just people were thinking, well, it's not it's not genre enough. It's too sweet. You know, it's like yeah. nobody, you know, it just it, those were the types of things that. I loved, but it was definitely a question as to whether we could make those work, um, right. you know, that we could, that we could make those viable, you know, for the, for, for, to release them and actually be able to keep, uh, you know, for those to help sustain the, the label. And I mean, so that's just been the most encouraging thing that people are like, oh yeah, cool. We want to see more stuff like heartbreakers and we want to see more stuff like jeremy and we want to see more stuff um like natural enemies like basically we want to see more dramas you know we want to see more films that are not that that don't have a real necessarily a really strong genre uh, component or something that's you know that hooks you or usually hooks an audience or seems like a safer kind of thing to release so that's been the that's just been the coolest thing um, you you yeah. are setting up perfectly for a couple things that I have on my list, and I I'm I'm going to go out of order now because this is just absolutely wonderful. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is uh, with a lot of these boutique labels, obviously there's not like a label that uh, caters to you know like Jeremy, like uh, a very not 
it's not cheesy in any way. It's not something that's done for comedy. It's it's just a, an earnest romance in a lot of different places. And a lot of these labels, they, they cater towards the genre fans or people that are into exploitation. And most mm -hmm. people are not going to take the risk on something like Jeremy. And I, I don't know uh, if there's a, a buried question there, but um, more just like kudos to Fun City to be able to be willing to absorb some of the risk because obviously in in 2022 and 2023 now where people are looking at physical media for like the fifth time saying that it's on its way out lol uh it's never happened so far um the fact that we're still making that observation and you're willing to take a risk on something like jeremy or cutter's way that maybe wouldn't be this major it'll sell 20,000 copy draw but you can still put your own personal spin on it is kind of a fascinating litmus test for the buyers because now you've got a whole group of people that seem to support you no matter what you're putting out that just love every single thing that you touch. So is that a difficult choice for you? Is that something that you struggle with or, or at this point have even had to worry about really? Which thing? Worry about which, which thing? Uh, maybe the risk in some of the more, uh, we'll say like easy dramas is not something that finds a lot of home on these boutique labels. And, and it's a lot of films easy. that people love genuinely. Easy dramas, did you say? Uh, I, I'm trying to be more vague on, on the titles because it's, oh. again, you cover so many different genres. It's hard to, to pin down one, but a lot of yeah, them, right. other boutiques wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole because they're not, mm -hmm. they're not cheesy eighties horror films. They're not crazy seventies yeah. sex exploitations. It's not black exploitation from the sixties. It's not uh, erotic thrillers from the nineties. These are just very like genuine stories that people really want to live and feel and breathe in. Well, I, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's um, it's really nothing more complicated than I, a lot of the stuff. I, the, most of the things we put out, I genuinely like or love, and and that's and it's also like the types of movies that I think I've probably uh, movies that I've been drawn to for my like whole adult life, uh, yeah. and, and and so. It's sort of like uh, <clears throat> specific the, the the these these sort of more um, small scale ground level yeah. uh, more reality based uh, films not necessarily reality based I, I don't want to uh, pigeonhole it or 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 specify it too much but but right. generally small scale uh, films and uh, and the types of films that are not made anymore um, or they're more in uh, you know, really just exists more in television, but in like long form television. Right. And there's something special about seeing a lot of these types of, a lot of this type of content, uh, which is thought, you know, which is too small for big screens now. And then is otherwise only exists in like six hours or more of a TV series. And there's yeah. something to be said for, let's see it in like 90 minutes or under two hours. Great. Right. Um, and so that's a lot of this. I, I like, cause I find even when these movies are from the sixties or the seventies and it's like, you know, before my time or when I was really small, uh, there's still a lot of stuff in those movies that are really relatable um, oh, yeah. because of the fact that they're, they do, a lot of them do tend to be more reality based films. They're, 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 they're so-called uh, low stakes or low ambition films, and but I find like that's kind of a, you know I it's kind of ironic because I find that a, like a lot of these movies are dealing with actually real, real issues, real world yep. things that people go have, were going through that have people have been going through you know from time in memoriam you know. Uh, yeah. The, uh, most of our movies are, you know, in the last 50 years, but I mean, there, a lot of it is things that people are still dealing with now. And then, and obviously for way before that too. Um, but it's, so it's funny that they get characterized as being low stakes, um, or, you know, and, and it's, but then it's like, but what, I mean, to me, like the comic book movies are more low stakes because they're just, right you know, they're just, it's completely fantasy and it's completely, yeah. I mean, everything is like larger than life. And these are movies that I, I think they sneak up on you because they have these quiet moments that are, that end up being really 
powerful or can end up yep. being really powerful and really devastating. And that's always been the types of movies that I've really um, responded to the most. So, and those are the rewatchable movies for me. I, I, the, I, I, I like, you know, for someone's sad or depressing movie that they don't want to go near. I mean, that's a lot of times that's my happy movie. I mean, um, you know, but um, I mean, I just find that those I can, there are certain scenes like if, it, you know, if something makes me, if something, um, if I can, sometimes I, 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 I like that a lot of these movies, I've seen them a bunch of times and they still get me, you know, yeah. I still shed a tear at, you know, I can still, you know, you know, well up at some of these movies that I've seen, um, you know, multiple times. So I don't know. That, it, it, so it all just, again, goes back to you do what you know, in a sense, you, 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 you know, you, you do what you know to a degree, not, right. not wholly. There's definitely some things I've put out that I, I didn't actually really know very well for a long time. Um, but there's, but I know, but there's things I feel uh, I can do something with because I, f I feel, again, it's like we're talking about this very vague kind of category of movies. Yeah. It is it is it does span genres and there can, there's comedies in there and there's dramas and there's movies that are more thrillery um so it's hard to pin down but it really when is. you know it, you when you know it you know it and and i think that the fact that it hadn't really been done before or hasn't really been done so much and i don't want to say we're like reinventing the wheel here but definitely there's like you know we've said there's we there was a there was some hole in the in the market there to some extent and i agree you know and that's that's it, and it just so happens that it's a lot of stuff that i've been wanting to see for a long time that i wasn't seeing right. coming out and i knew there were other people you know you know through you know forums and social media and blogs and stuff like that that there was there were some there were some other people out there that 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 really you know liked things like uh, Jeremy or I start counting, uh, right? You know, or heartbreakers. And I, I don't know if it's just me, and maybe uh, just a, a good place to give some public feedback on it here. But one of the things that I, I really wanted to get out there is, and I've interviewed many labels over the last year, and I, I don't think I've said anything like this to anybody else. Uh, these are are ones that I feel like each, pretty much every release, like probably ninety percent of them so far, have been tailor-made to something that would fit me perfectly and the the word that i keep coming back to is the word contemplative and it seems like no matter what genre that you're putting out it's a movie that uh i like i can't shake off and it's not like i want to shake it off it's something that no matter what i'm somehow still thinking about it for like 10 days afterwards and it's wow. everything else no matter what i'm absorbing it, i'm wanting to like right after wa watching walking the edge for the next 10 days it was I mean, Walking the Edge was shot so much better. How is this like getting accolades nowadays and stuff like that? It, it's something about every one of these releases. It is so special to be able to see it in this new light and, and yeah. compare it in a way that we we didn't have that lens in 1984 when some of these were released. And I, I love to see that attention because like you said, a lot of these are not getting made like this. And perhaps some of that, you know, we could maybe say is like the budgetary side of things because we've kind of lost that whole mid-range budget film it's either got to be the most independent film in the world or a three billion dollar comic film and it yeah. doesn't work when there's genuine stories to be told out there right right i mean i think um yeah one of the uh one of the important distinctions about a lot of the stuff that we've put out that's is interesting is that a lot of the films have been are actually studio films or they're right or they're movies that were made um you know, there were movies made for like mainstream displaying theaters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and 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 it's in, and I think for a lot of people, um, they, if it wasn't like one of the A level, one of the movies that was Oscar nominated or Oscar right. winning from that time or from a very, very well-known, you know, from a group of very well-known filmmakers, a lot of the stuff that we've put out is the, are the, are sort of the slightly deeper cuts. We're just on like this, not necessarily lower quality. Right. I don't want to say second tier in terms of quality 
per se, but they're just the movies that were that that didn't that haven't lived on as much because they're you know again like the film it's not a it's not a Scorsese movie uh, you know it's not from like one of the the master auteurs who were their whole body of work is you know constantly being watched and discovered and right. and put out there on you know um and but i think it and and sometimes it's funny because then on the on the so on the flip side so since like we've been partnered with vinegar syndrome for so much of our for our existence um and so many of the other labels are dealing more in genre stuff and more um uh you know not hollywood stuff right. so we're like kind of like it's a weird thing where we're, we're like the hollywood label in a way <laughs> but then also but then also in so many ways like you said before we're doing stuff that no other labels are doing but sometimes there's people i read feedback like oh their their stuff is so mainstream because it's not shot because we're not doing like the shot on video horror right stuff. And we're not you know it's not extreme it's a it's a different kind of I mean, it's extreme right. filmmaking in a, in a different way but yeah it is funny to think about you could be mainstream and then at the same time be going against the grain completely uh, and, and every year especially in a lot of the the time when a lot of these were made these were just ones uh you know if they didn't have an a-list star or an a-list director at that time they're not going to be in theaters for three months at a time uh, in, in many of those cities. And because of that, maybe many people didn't see them back then. And if they didn't do well, then they won't get another release. They won't get maybe another theatrical run. So genuinely, some of these are really seeing like only their second life, which for a lot of these other films, they've been out on every format, sometimes multiple times right. and have maybe gained a fan base many times. And it's sort of steamrolled throughout the years. But some of these, like, Natural Enemies never had that opportunity. This isn't something that it's been able to chug along and keep putting people on the train as they roll on for 40 years. So it's it's amazing to see so many willing to hop on that train now. Yeah, I mean, I guess it speaks to people. People, I mean, what we've been, I've been surprised by, very surprised by, genuinely, I'm not just saying this, I've been surprised by the fact that there's been as many people I mean, as modest as it as it is, we're still here, and we're in a niche here. But right, as modest as that is, I I have been surprised by the fact that it seems to be like something that more more people wanted than I imagined or or yeah. thought were out there. That's good to hear. I, I'm glad to hear that you're feeling that as well, because it's it's nice to see like uh, somebody reference Fun City Editions on some of these big, you know, movie fandom podcasts that are out there, like ranking films from certain years or bringing up, uh, you know, certain genres they talk about go, Hey, did you hear fun city? Just put out this other one. I I've heard it probably three or four times over the last six months. And it's always wonderful to see that sort of reception because then, uh, suddenly there's another interest in something that's come out over the last two years. And in many of these labels, they, they don't really get that continuing effect. So I just hope it continues to happen for you. And it appears that it will be because uh, there's a couple things that have either been soft announced or fully announced. Uh, you've got mm -hmm. a big one that was just uh, started talking about this week with uh, party girl coming out soon. What, uh, what can you tell us about party girl? What can I tell you about party girl? Well, it's obviously a very beloved film. Um, yeah. if you've been following the response on social media. Um, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a classic from the '90s boom of indie filmmaking. It, it, you know, totally the type of film you were just alluding to a few minutes ago that doesn't really exist anymore in terms of like budget range. Yeah. And it stars Parker Posey, who was and is, and, and at that time, at, at, at the time that Party Girl was coming out, she was just she was starting a run of starring in a lot of indie movies yeah. um, that you know, at the time got uh, a lot of play and, you know, she was on her way to being queen of the Indies. And this was actually the first, her first starring role. And uh, it's after she had appeared in Dazed and Confused in a smaller but very memorable part. And it's just like this great time capsule of 90s New York yeah. and the club scene. And it's also a 
throwback to screwball comedies from the 30s and 40s. And it's just a great, really fun. It's a fun, it's a time capsule, and it just hasn't been available in a decent version in a long time. So we actually went back and um, we we worked from like original 16 millimeter negatives and and reconstructed the movie, it, it scanned it in 4K, and everything had to be. So this was a movie that was shot on 16 and blown up to 35. Uh, but we actually had we like had uh, um, uh, Michael Felsher uh, from Red Shirt. Pictures. I don't know if you've had him on here before, but he's a, not yet. He's you know, anyway. He's he. You'll, you'll see. You've probably seen his his uh, logo on. Oh yeah, I, I, I any yeah, no DVDs mind. and Blu-rays over the years. Anyway, he he reconstructed the whole movie, uh, like all of the all of the transitions, all the cuts, and all the wow. fades, and everything had to be redone again. And um, anyway, I, I think it looks really good. It's actually. Um, you know, I know we're talking about physical media here. It is actually on the Criterion channel now. So if someone yep. wants to see um, how it looks, how our master looks, uh, we did it. Um, but it's on there now. Um, so it's on, look, it's kind of like a commercial for our for our release. But the but the Fantastic. response has been um, huge. Like when they yeah. posted on their socials um, before we the the day before we announced ours, uh, it was a massive response, and then. On ours, it's been, I mean, more modest because we don't have the same following that Criterion does. But it's been our biggest response uh, in terms of, at least in terms of all the social media. That doesn't always necessarily mean that it's going to translate into the most sales. I hope so. Of course. But uh, it doesn't always work that way. And there's a lot of people that are, as you know, um, that are, they're film, they're, they're movie fans, but they, they, they ingest their movies different ways. So yeah. they're not all physical media people. I wish they all were, but, um, but this is a movie that, that this is all to say that this is a movie that sort of goes beyond the appeal for this movie and how much it's beloved goes beyond, I think, uh, the physical media, um, audience crowd. Um, so yeah, there's definitely going to be people that, that that enjoy this new restoration and unfortunately do not buy our blu-ray but hopefully but that doesn't hopefully that doesn't uh that's um not true for the people that end up watching this um this podcast here or video what do we call it video cast i don't know i it's also put out as a podcast what do you say podcast also, it's both okay yeah well anyway so we're very excited about it it's obviously uh you know a real thrill to again put something out that people have loved and um, just hasn't been out in a in a decent version, and um, you know, again, it has to do with economics and the just the way that a lot of these movies end up being bought. Right. So the catalogs that they're part of, the companies that put these movies out, go out of business, and then they get absorbed or acquired by another company, which also then goes out of business and is absorbed by another company. So you you know, it's just a, it's just like a this is just like an ongoing uh, right. thing, and 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 Party Girl's not unique in this way. Uh, but thankfully, everything was available in terms of all of the original elements, and we were able to we were able to work off those. And then also, the filmmaker again is around, and she's great, uh, Daisy von Schurler Mayer. And we did an interview with her, and um, and and she's awesome, and she was so supportive. And then uh, Bill Coleman, who did the who's the music supervisor, because the music is such a huge part of this movie. And so we got a great interview with him. Uh, uh, Harry Berkmeyer, who was the co-producer and co-writer of the film, he uh, he actually came here to my apartment and we turned that it makes... into a studio and um, <laughs> got him. And then, uh, of course, most everyone's going to be the most excited. We got Parker Posey on the disc, a new interview with Parker. So um, really cool. Everyone has, there's a real warmth from everyone who worked on this movie. They're all, everyone loves it. people, you know, they, this movie is almost 30 years old, but you know, I got so many like, are you going to talk to so-and-so? Are you going to talk to this person? <laughs> you know, I could have had so, I, I mean, budget and time constraints, right. you know, at a certain point, I, I just can't, we couldn't do all the interviews, but we could have had even I, I put more because people love, even the people that worked on the movie are, and they, a lot of these people went on to do a lot of other big things, but Party Girl is a very special movie for, you know, for everyone who worked on it. So people are really proud of it, and 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 it's 
yeah, and loved and and we're happy to talk about it. So, you know, hopefully that all comes through with the uh, with the release. I it it appears it's it's going to. I mean, there's so many things that I read in like you were talking about the social media reaction has been remarkable. Uh, the the amount of times in different websites that I read the phrase "Criterion has to be pissed they didn't get this." is hilarious but it it more so speaks to the quality of cinema being put out by fun city because uh and, and not putting down criterion in any way but obviously there's a lot of films that people have seen you know deserving of that c on the front of the the blu-ray case and yeah right right nowadays it's sort of uh different because we have other labels that are competing that you could argue are as high quality or in many cases even higher quality that, that they're able to continue putting out films like this. And it's it speaks to the esteem of somebody like yourself that you're able to have <clears throat> this curated catalog that includes something like Party Girl. Because, again, Parker Posey was starting like this impossible run of amazing roles, like really incredible, like subversive indie acting that we didn't really see a lot coming out of that time. And now she has this massive legacy. And... I, I I respect this movie so damn much, and it just genuinely happened when I saw this got announced. And then the bigger thing for me maybe was seeing the scale that this reached because uh, the the announcement came from a letterboxed article that was shared hundreds and hundreds of times. So many people yeah, excited yeah. about this. Yeah. Uh, one of the big questions is: This is the first time that uh, this is being distributed through MVD distribution. Can you share mm -hmm. how that came about and maybe what the future holds for Fun City? Sure. Yeah. So, um, so we we started a new uh, partnership with MVD uh, to uh, distribute uh, Fun City titles, and I mean we still have stuff that's coming through OCN Vinegar Syndrome as well. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's I guess it's been about a little over two years since um, you know since we started putting titles out, right? And uh, so yeah, the opportunity came up to work with. MVD and wanted to see how that would go. Just as a, a little bit of it, obviously it's it's not exactly the same uh, model as as Vinegar Syndrome OCN, uh, which is pretty unique. And yeah, so the you know so the letterbox announcement, for instance, um, you know they've been really big supporters of Fun City, um, and uh, and I spoke with uh, with one of the editors over there, Mitchell, and he's a huge. He's been championing a lot of our releases. I'm and, so glad you, know, you just name dropped him. I, uh, I I produce a couple podcasts for a friend of mine, and Mitchell is a close friend of his. And okay. every single time Mitchell brings up a Fun City thing, I'm just so stuck because he reaches so many people. So anyways. Well, I, and, and, and so does Letterbox. You know, I mean, yeah. it's a younger, not, not exclusively, but I feel like it's a it's a younger demo. And um, I've always, I'm always looking at Letterbox to see, yeah. Um, how our releases are being received, especially because I've probably said this on here before. I've definitely said it on other podcasts. So many of our releases are like very, have very low viewer numbers. Yeah. And so I can really see when our release comes out of a particular yeah. movie, how the number rises. And so often it's completely solely from our release because it's not available anywhere else. Really. Right. Like Heartbreakers or something is a good example of that. So it's good. To, it's really interesting to see the the number of views go up and then how the, the actual rating starts to go up. Um, and sometimes you're like, come on, how come this isn't, isn't a 3.5 by now? Right. I mean, look at all the four star reviews. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know how the algorithm, I just, I don't know how all of that works. It's the, the math is too high for me, I'm sure. But um, yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, the, the difference here is of course, when you release a movie on, when we release a movie with OCN, um, it it's announced on the first of the month, and that's when it goes up for sale. And there isn't, you know, and it all sort of the news breaks that this is more of a more traditional kind of um, distribution sort of uh, uh, calendar, what have you, with MVD as being a more traditional distributor. So I had the opportunity. So in this case, it was we're not sort of beholden to that same kind of uh, announcement and release that you have with uh, with OCM vinegar syndrome. Right. So this is more like, okay, well, let me see if somebody out there, like a, an outlet, a media outlet such as Letterboxd wants to break the story. 
um, if we have a trailer and a poster and it's, you know, it's news. So yeah, I, I mentioned it to Mitchell and he was, you know, very, uh, he was very happy to help share the news and certainly reaches a lot more people than I would reach if I just put it on. Right. Our- <laughs> of course. I mean, that's, but that's, you know, that's just, that's just par for the course in, um, in the industry, you know? Right. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's nice that, um, excuse me, that that's as I think in our world, not just physical, it's not even just physical, it just generally movie, movie watching and, you know, and movie conversation, like, uh, Letterboxes is, has, uh, has a lot of reach and has a lot of, huge. Uh, has, you know, uh, it plays, plays a really big part in that. So for, for, for them to be aware of us, uh, uh, first of all, and then to actually like help, you know, champion us to one degree or another, uh, is, 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 you know, really huge and, and also very humbling too. Like, uh, you know, it's just like nice when, um, you know, when, uh, uh, some, someone like letterbox knows who you are. So. I agree. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just so glad you dropped Mitchell's name. Mitchell Beaupre uh, for Letterboxd is amazing. He he does a lot of really hard work, and I hope people seek him out as well. I may, I may throw in a link for Mitchell down in the description below. Just okay. So yes. You should. Yes. You should. You should. And yeah, I mean, uh, I'll I'll just say that um, he'll he'll he he may be he may be doing some other he may be doing some some off hour non letterbox but fun city related stuff in the future. So. Interesting. Uh, yeah. But uh yeah, he 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 I've been noticed I had noticed that he had really uh a last couple of our releases, I think um he was someone that was, you know, he was really effusive about. I think Heartbreakers was one in particular. Yeah. So which is cool. I just love seeing that one is a you know, that one for me is um seeing seeing love for Heartbreakers especially because it, it just really was kind of slept on for yeah. so long, especially from a younger, the younger generation. Nobody's really, because that's a movie that just out of circulation since the tape era. So for whatever right. reason, nobody knows. I don't really know why this, you know, it's just, it's kind of a mystery as to why some of these things just kind of got, um, you know, left behind these, these right. you know, studio studio owned properties like heartbreakers but there you go it's a it's just opportunity for us you know so um i'll take it <laughs> two so, more things about the letterbox announcement one first of all the art looks amazing and i'm so glad that you always get great commissioned art it, it really sells the film very well and i hope more people grab onto it because it looks stupendous oh i think it's a huge it's a huge uh part of uh of what we do and i always yeah. try to uh, match people up, match. I try to have the match the artwork up. Um, it's the same thing with like whoever's doing a commentary or writing an essay. And in the, in the, in this case, Jess Rogger, uh, who's, uh, her, her, um, her pro name, professional name or company name is Rodder and friends, but it's really, uh, Jess. And, um, she is a, she's the, she actually did for us previously, the artwork for Jeremy, the slipcover art for Jeremy, which just gorgeous door. And, um, yeah, we worked, you know, we, we had a really fun time collaborating on that. And I mean, I had, I've like had t-shirts of with her art on them for years. Cause she does a lot of, uh, she does a lot of rock, uh, music stuff, like a lot of, um, stuff that's kind of like, she's in that seventies realm a lot. Yeah. You know, you want to like a, like a Harry Nilsson shirt or something, or a Lee Hazelwood shirt. Nice. Or a Rodriguez. Uh, she's done it. You know, I mean, they're they're limited, but um, yeah, the, the you know they they're they're available. You know, she's often done stuff in collaboration with like Light in the Attic. Uh, oh, nice. Her distributor and label. And anyway, so I knew of her stuff for a long time and wanted to work with her, and I felt like Jeremy was like just like a perfect fit because of the. Amelia, the seventies thing. And that's a lot of the stuff that, that, uh, she does. She does, she's, she's, and, 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 and so many of those movies, of course, people have really big hair. Yeah. And I, think, and I love what, and, and I wanted to make sure. Big hair. Lot, <laughs> well, yeah, but that's a different move. But that's right. Different of art course, art of course. Movie, but, um, but yeah, but also what I mean is that a lot of her artwork, um, you know, have been, you know, especially rock and roll people with people have, 
especially yeah. from the seventies, you know, hair, um, and a lot of it. And so I was really, I was really excited about the Jeremy one, the way the artwork of like Linus's hair flowing yeah. from the front to the back. Um, that was, that was fun. But anyway, party girl, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh just did the artwork for party girl and um uh, and and i and 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 then and that was a really good fit too because previously like about five years ago she designed uh parker's memoir parker posey's uh best-selling memoir uh -huh. so there's, there's there's a connection there so so like you know jess knows parker in fact she showed the artwork to parker like a month ago or something i i didn't Ask her to do that, or didn't know she was going to do that, but she said that Parker Parker signed off, gave you know, gave the thumbs up to the to the party girl artwork, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she she just yeah she, she I knew it was going to be like um, you know really uh, you know there was there was the synergy there, and uh, yeah, so I love what she came up with. Um, I think she cat. I said basically like I want one side that's the so we have a two sided artwork, of course. So I said like let's get one side where it's kind of like serious Parker, like business like Parker. And then one side that's like party Parker. I should say Mary because her, her, her character's name in the movie is Mary. So I think she got that. Cause like the front is like, is Mary at the beginning of the movie when she's going to go to the library and she's, she's got the, she's got the glasses on. Um, right. And, uh, and, and she's, and she's looking pretty, pretty serious. And, um, and then the back, you know, she's, she's, uh, she's in the, she's more, I mean, she's in the library, but she's kind of, it's a little more, uh, she's a little more dressed down, but yeah. still, uh, you know, just super stylish. Cause I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's her, what that movie is. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's effortless or it may, it looks effortless anyway. And that's, <laughs> yeah. huge, and that's one of the other really cool things about that, about the movie is that it has all of these. Uh, real like you know these re like designer pieces that are like things they had to beg borrow and you know they didn't steal them but you know they they <laughs> they had to borrow pieces for these you know and people who really know fashion they know like oh that's a Todd Oldham or that's a Vivian right. Westwood you know it's a Gaultier um, and it's a part of it's cool I mean it's like one of the things that um, you know makes it this cultural touchstone you know it's like the, between the soundtrack and and the fashion like just the fact that this little it's a little movie uh, right. has all of these sort of top tier uh elements to it that you would that would think cost would cost a lot of money or be too cost prohibitive but they had the right people who were doing putting the soundtrack together putting the costume design together who you know it was like you know friends ask doing friends you know favors and things like that so that's and that you know I mean, that happens a lot in the business and that's certainly what happened uh with party girl you know in, in a lot of ways nice uh the other thing that has been uh terribly frustrating for somebody that tries to uh i don't want to sound too stuffy but like try to educate the the fans of this hobby with certain things just to see how many people read a headline lose their shit and then don't finish the article uh oh, so yeah. many people saw the word mvd and went oh my god the world's on fire and uh, yeah. fun city is over and this is going to be something completely different um yeah. i was astonished by how many people didn't just read a couple paragraphs down to see that it says they will still be partnered with vinegar syndrome so that that is an ongoing partnership and you will continue to have releases through ocn we will yeah yeah that, so it's uh, that's how easy it is. Just yes, come on, people. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's um, it's yeah. It's funny because people. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the reading comprehension is sometimes <laughs> really lacking uh, when it's all right there. Like, there's a button to say read more, but people don't. And yeah, we, it's yeah. It's usually all there. Or or sometimes I just saw a tweet where somebody was tweeting the about the. M the Radiance Fun City UK release of Marriage to the Mob. It's our release, but the UK in for the UK and somebody in the in the tweet thread then said, God, I hope some of these great extra features come to North America sometime soon. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> are you taking the piss? I, I don't know. I mean is that uh, so yeah. Um, yeah it's 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 funny. I, I just have to laugh. Um, 
but uh yeah so um it's just a to me um you know people have only known us one way and this is right. just uh it's for for me you know i just look at it as some opportunity to to do some things a different way to grow yeah. a little bit and we'll see you know we'll see how it goes and I think one of the important parts of that is the growth aspect, because uh, again, Fun City has developed this this fan base of people that just genuinely align with a lot of the the flavors of these films. And other partner labels have already shown that that sort of growth as well. So I can see why people would be afraid of of they're gone. But at the same time, not not to diminish anything that OCN does, but when they have, I think they're up to twenty two partner labels, and they're announcing sometimes five Vinegar Syndrome titles and like. 12 partner labels and that happens yeah. all at once so yeah, to, like, yeah. with party girl you fun city genuinely had a moment on thursday and if you're <laughs> coming out with 17 announcements on the first of a month that is kind of hard to to stick out from the pack sometimes i i imagine yeah no it's a good you, it's, a, it's a good point uh it's and, you know it's interesting you, you that, that you bring that up uh, or that you've observed that um and i hadn't even really I hadn't really thought about thought about that. Um, yeah. You know, in relation to Thursday, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a different it's a different thing because if we had done Party Girl, if Party Girl was released through OCN, um, yeah, it would have been one of twenty something other releases. That's yeah, right. it's, I mean, they're obviously the partner label stable has grown so much since. Uh, Fun City started. When we yeah. started, we were number two. The Agfa was the only other outside label or partner label. So, uh, yeah. So, um, and there's obviously a lot of really strong benefits to that. Yeah. In that model. And, um, but yeah, sometimes, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's like no, not in no despair, no meant is not, not meant in a disparaging way, but it's just, sort of the fact of the matter is yes uh if you're saying it uh it's not you know i didn't say it, you said it that it it gets right. lost if you're noticing that then there's something to that that sometimes things just there's just too much out there and, and yeah uh it's so it was nice to be able to just to have party goal first of all to do an announcement like i said to do because i knew i know i you know party girl is a film that's beloved and has a huge audience that goes way beyond very much so the fun you know our core audience yep. so um yeah i felt like yeah it was it was definitely uh it was definitely a benefit i think and also and and also you know kind of enlightening to see um to just to see a different way have a different way to to announce it so yeah i mean hopefully we'll have more titles like that that are uh, exciting enough and have and are you know loved enough, beloved enough that we can do similar types of right. announcements, uh, news breaks or whatever. But you know that's not always going to happen. I mean, some of our stuff is is you know it, it's not going to necessarily be sexy enough, at least at the at the time of announcement. You know, so. All right. Uh... Trying to respect your time, but I've got two two more big things and then a small question left. Uh, sure. The other no, this big is a lot of fun. You're you're good. You know, it is. It's still fairly early. You know, we still have a lot of the day ahead of us. So, uh, well, I mean, one of the other biggest things for Fun City, you just brought them up a minute ago. Radiance. Um, we we always champion accessibility of films on this channel, right. and one of the big things is now instead of obviously like OCN distributes to the entire world if if somebody orders, but. That can be cost prohibitive, and right. obviously, uh, being a partner of Radiance will open up a a whole new world, essentially, to to the idea of Fun City and these exact same discs. For those wondering if it's ever coming to the North America side, hey, they're already here. Um, some of those uh, they've got three films announced. Uh, first of all, how'd that come out? So, how did the relationship develop and build? And sure. um, is, is there anything uh, you know interesting or or maybe something exclusive that will happen in the UK, or will most of that be following what you've done in the US? Uh, well, well, so Fran, I've known Fran for a long time, just through uh, you know he was at Arrows, yeah, as most people know, for many years. And uh, I was previously at Kino Lorber for a lot of that time. And we just have, you know, a lot of, so you just have a lot of uh, common connections. 
right. and um, friendships and acquaintances. And, and so Fran had approached me um, that, you know, in addition to doing Radiance uh, releases over there that were, you know, going to be on the Radiance label, that he also wanted to try this sort of uh, slightly different uh, kind of um, sub distribution or, it, you know, it's a, it, I don't even know quite what to call it, but basically it kind of is just a, it was interesting the way it, it took shape uh, with, yeah. uh, with, the, especially with the MGM titles, because um, of course I don't own the MGM titles, but, um, but yeah, we worked, it, it, he wanted to do them as fun city releases over there, which is, you know, I just said, cool, let's, yeah, let's give it a try. You know, yeah. we're, we're still, it's still, you know, to be, to, you know, to be determined, like how it all shakes out uh, in terms of uh, the sales and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Fran's a really smart guy. He's obviously, you know, he's been in this business a long time, yeah. very savvy. So yeah, cool to be partnered with him. And then with like Walking the Edge, that's a slightly different, a little bit different than with the MGM owned titles because Walking the Edge is a, is a title that we own. So um, it's a slightly, you know, different setup. But right. I mean, at least they're all being released. I think they're all being released as like Fun City UK or or something, which is yeah. kind of cool. I never, that wasn't anything that I... Very cool. Uh, I didn't have that uh, really, you know, in the plans or, you know, in any way, like in the master... You know, global domination wasn't on the to-do yeah, list <laughs> no uh so yeah i don't know so we'll see you know it's just i mean fran's doing it's pretty amazing the the uh pickup he's already gotten for yeah. his label and you know the the way he's got you know the way people were excited about it right away which obviously speaks to his um long tenure with arrow and and all the great things uh that that they did and that he did with them so yeah uh, it's partnerships like that are 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 cool to be a part of so yeah like i said we'll see we'll see how it goes i can't i, I don't i think there will probably be more uh we'll we'll you know we'll see um but yeah you've got three uh three right now to to start with yeah so the three so far we've got walking the edge married to the mob and cutter's way and I believe none of them have technically released in the UK yet, right? First is February, I believe. People have people have been getting Cutter's Way and Married to the Mob already. Oh yeah, wow, those are out. Those are out. Yeah, because we've been uh, I've been I've that. been retweeting like people holding their oh nice you know, their UK editions. That's how I found out. That's how I had the tweet about the guy, you know, saying, "Well, you know, I hope these come to North America right. sometimes." Yeah, soon. yeah. Don't so know how I forgot guy. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I don't think Walking the Edge came out yet, but yeah, so we've got three, and he's partnering up with other other uh, labels too. I don't know uh, which ones are public yet, so I won't say. Maywoo Maywoo Films is public, and uh, that is an exciting one for me because they they kind of quietly released that first uh, release that they did. The uh, let me see what the exact title is because I don't want to screw it up on them right now. But um, it is uh, Man Mark for Death Twenty Years Later, and I. I don't even remember how, but I came across it online and because I share all the announcements, I shared it and it kind of lit up. Like it's, it's one of my most like publicly engaged posts because people had never heard of the label. They had uh, heard of the film, but had never had a chance to see it. And then when it came out, they had no way of sending things out globally. So Fran is going to kind of open that door for a label like this to be able to actually have an impact with their films. And that's, when you get these partnerships, I don't think people realize how genuinely life-changing for both the, the label that's partnering with him, but also for film fans to be able to get access to some of these. Mm -hmm. It can genuinely change lives. And it's it's amazing to see some of these get <laughs> like genuinely a, a global release. You could you could reach anybody in the entire world like that. Right. Right. Well, I mean, he's in the UK. I don't know. So I don't know it's how global it is because it's well he's allowing people to order from anywhere I believe. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's always it's always kind of like a. Uh, I sort of feel like most things are accessible if you want to pay for the shipping, essentially right. from, from from somewhere. Um, but yeah, if you have an official, if you have an official distributor in you know another country, of course, then 
then right. there's more, obviously there's more options, cost-effective options, at least for people that are over there in that country or, or nearer yeah. to it. I mean, the shipping from crossing the Atlantic, of course, is, is what uh, gets really pricey. So yeah, it definitely seems to be like almost like more of a, uh, that's almost seems like more of a deterrent for people than say like region coding or something yeah. like that. Um, Cause it does seem like people are more like, well, I'm not going to buy it, not because I, it's region A and I'm region B, right. but because the cost is just so stupid now. With the you know the shipping is the shipping costs have just gotten so expensive. So, well, on the other side of things, uh, it's not great in the U.S. for like boutique uh, physical stores where somebody can walk in and just discover a fun city release. Um, there's some obviously, but it's not right. like wide chains or anything like that anymore. But in the U.K., right. like there's a much bigger opportunity for somebody to be, you know, maybe somebody in their 60s that doesn't really import, they can stumble into an HMV and go, oh, what it, what is this walking the edge? Oh, that's Robert Forster. Oh my God, this looks fantastic. So I mean, if you say so, I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe the, maybe the brick and mortar, um, uh, uh, store, you know, that, that, that market is maybe still more robust over there. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, yes, here, of course, we're in a more, I mean, I, I just think of it generally as around the world, not just here, right. that people are more or less shopping from home most of the time. And unless you're a huge label, like, you know, unless you're like a, a criterion or something like that, and you have like a section in Barnes and Noble, <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, obviously that's like a whole other thing, you know, right. the, these, that, that's that sale, for instance, you know, I mean, that, that kind of thing is, I mean, that's like decades in the making. Um, but yeah, it's very hard. It's hard to get product in physical stores, brick and mortar stores, uh, for sure. That That's not the way things have been trending for a long time. Just like, you know, print journalism is dead or dying, you know, it's a, right. you know, it's similar. Um, so yeah, I mean, very cool though. If I see if, if I actually see one of our releases in a store, which is usually like the archive, which is the yeah. Anderson Trump store. <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty cool, but it's definitely something when you're like, oh, I'm in the, I, I haven't actually seen one of our releases in a Barnes and Noble or something, but you know, maybe some of them have been there. I don't know. Uh, I've seen them online, but if right. I, you know, yeah. And that's it's actually... Funny. Uh, you know, we were talking about MVD. It's actually one of the things that MVD kind of has a, a little larger distribution possibility with something like that. They've got more stores that they ship to internally than OCN, obviously. Uh, and OCN does put out the retail releases, but a lot of that, it's not going to, you know, OCN's not putting releases in Walmart or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not totally sure about like where all because certain you know obviously certain accounts buy certain movies right. and don't buy others but yeah certainly mvd is a more uh they have their they have a they're a more traditional distributor have been around a right. lot longer um and 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 they have a more they have more outreach in terms of uh wholesale distribution and you know um sort of the the more you know more traditional kind of uh, that sale that part of their sales is you know is pretty strong and you know well established so yeah it may be that i mean hopefully uh you know with releases that are like something like party girl will be in other maybe be in places that it might not be uh if it was going through ocn yeah. um so you know there's pluses and minuses obviously o ocn or syndrome has a you know their model is a hugely direct to consumer um, yeah, which is uh, which also has a lot of benefits, and you know um, we we certainly experience like when a real title goes up for sale, day of sale, a huge you know obviously you get, the sales are very front loaded. You know, you get right. a, it's a lot of like see it, pre order it right away, uh, and <laughs> and you know so so yes, we'll have uh, some adjustment in terms of like how these things roll out and and how the numbers kind of you know start to move and you know when they move and how quickly right. or how slowly they move uh one of the things that you have teased is you put out a picture of a title that we haven't said even once tonight 
and that is the wonderful primetime panic box set, and uh, you you put a two on the front of it. Can you uh, in any way expand on what's coming? Because for a lot of us, those were exciting films to have in that box set, and just a really fun release that we. Again, I I don't know that it's like this big industry wide thing, but we are. I feel like we're seeing an increase in TV films kind of being distributed across the yeah. board a little bit. But yeah, we definitely we fun. definitely have. Yeah, yeah. I, one big one like uh, uh, Toby Hooper's "I'm Dangerous Tonight" last year was a fun one, and then uh, mm -hmm. Kino, yeah, Kino Lober is putting out a lot of those old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kino, yeah, uh, yeah. Frank has been uh, he's he's been. He's been good. He's, I mean, he's, he, yeah, with the TV movies, he's certainly for, I, I, I feel like for at least a few years, uh, has really, uh, put out some, yeah, uh, some pretty major ones and done some really, you know, some, and, 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 and really important releases and things that people were like super excited. Uh, we're, you know, we're seeing the light of day on physical and on, you know, on Blu ray. Um, yeah. I, when I was there, uh, a couple that I was really championing that I was really excited uh, came out um, were uh, the, the Jericho Mile, Michael Mann's movie, and uh, Nightmare in Badham County. Uh, yes, County Moxie. Those were two that I, I you know, uh, it was a that was part of a a big deal with Disney, and I remember nice. I was just like, just make sure you get those two. Uh, <laughs> it ended up being they just got like everything. Um, right. It was a huge, huge uh, deal, but that was cool because those were like, uh, you know, movies that had. I mean, obviously, that the Michael Mann one, you know, is uh, th those films that had directors that we think of as being, oh, they direct feature films. Uh, yep. But the fact that some, you know, there's a oh, this is a movie that Michael Mann directed for TV. It actually, yeah. you know, it's the first movie feature length movie he directed. Um, you know, it's important, you know, you're, you're trying to get the whole, uh, the whole body of work. So right. when these TV movies aren't there, um, or not accessible, then you're like missing sometimes some significant parts of the body of that work. So like the ones we released, for instance, you know, we have a movie directed by Jonathan Kaplan, um, and Jonathan Kaplan, obviously people know and love some of the a lot of the feature films he's made but you know he had obviously also done a chunk of tv movies and uh, right. death rock to osaka was one of those and then um uh and then we had a movie by joe Sargent, and joe Sargent did taking a pal one two three but also he's one of those directors that did a lot of uh, tv movies too so for a long time you had uh the feature movie the the you know the the theatrical films were available and out there, but the TV movies, like once they aired on TV, you know, they were kind of just gone unless you saw them on TV late at night or something, but that happens yeah. obviously less and less now. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it was, that was totally a, probably maybe I said this when we talked last time, but like the primetime panic was definitely kind of a, Oh, let's, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. I, right. Well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, some might, you know, I, in some ways it was kind of a, a risk, I guess, because it was all very, pretty early in, in our, uh, hit, you know, our history as a label right. and, uh, and it was TV movies and it was, a, and that's also our first box set and also kind of early maybe to have a box set. But, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, I, 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 once I was able to, see that maybe we could group some of these because it came from a large catalog so it's kind yeah. of like it really was cherry picking and so once i felt like oh these kind of go together in a way like we can make these work um before you go on i'm just curious if you know offhand i'm trying to think was there another partner label box set before that or was that the first ocn partner label box set i uh, think it might have been the first maybe yeah i don't know i mean other I than like, like agfa puts out a bunch of their like 40 oh. minute they they put out triple features of basically shorts, but okay, okay, yeah, you would know, you might know better than I would actually, but um, yeah. So anyway, so primetime panic, it was like super surprising and obviously super exciting that, uh, um, you know, that what you just said, like how how excited it was and how uh, you felt like it was such a major uh, release, you know, because I was kind of like I was very fifty fifty on that, right. Because I just felt like, oh, these movies have like, they have, <clears throat> they have a lot of 
uh, qualities that are that are they have a lot of positives, but I felt like they had a lot of there are other aspects of, the, of you know some of the some of the they have some of those just flaws that are inherent to something being made for major right. network television and when they were. So I just felt like, well, is someone going to watch this and be like, oh, this is so hokey or right. like, oh, this is unbelievable. I don't know. But it, it seems like mostly people were just appreciating that they were available in such, you know, good quality versions. Yeah. Or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, so Primetime Panic 2 uh, is is in the works. And um, I don't have a release date for it yet, but uh, it, it you know, I think it it it, it may be um, it, it it may be the next one uh, to announce more in more detail. We'll see. But uh, yeah, three more. It'll be three more movies. So Sweet. yeah, from the same you know same era, and um, yeah, I, I hope you know hopefully hopefully people uh, appreciate it as much as the first one. But uh, you know, it remains to be seen. Sequels are high, you know, especially yeah. the original one is, uh, you know, it does <laughs> as well or is as appreciated uh, as 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 the original as the first one. The the last thing that we'll go with, uh, just to give a personal aspect to Fun City, I just discovered before we went live that you have a bird. Can you tell us about your bird at all? <laughs> I know it's a weird way to end it, but it's kind of cool. A lot of people don't know a lot about all those details. Well, pause it. I'll bring her over here. Well, this is Garuda. She's hiding right now in my uh, in my neck here. She likes to wear. I if I wear a collared shirt, uh, she always likes that. That's the burrow. But I'll nice. just. She's gonna fly away when I. But I. But yeah, she's shy. See. Uh, <laughs> whoop, whoop. There she goes. So she. Uh, it's not me. I mean. She's she's gonna birds. You can't force birds to do things, you know. You gotta right. let them go. She likes to be. She's she's pretty cage. Uh, you know, she's 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 comfortable. She's a bird that I mean, she can go where she wants to go, but she's more comfortable being. If her cage is there, she's gonna go back to her cage unless she's really tired. Then she might fall asleep on me. But right. Yeah. Uh, That's so fantastic. little camera shy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. I, I hope people enjoy that. It was just something that <laughs> seemed interesting because not a lot of people get to know, you know, some of the faces and, and the lives yeah. of the people behind these labels. Well, that's Garuda, and she's a green cheek conure, and uh, she's 20 years old. Wow. How long have you had her? I adopted her when she was 15. So, wow. yeah, they could live to be in their 30s, you know, so. Wow. And, uh, yeah, Garuda, that's the name she came with, and that's a... Uh, uh, it comes from uh, Hindu mythology. It's like a bird humanoid uh, type character. So people from that part of the world uh, will sometimes, you know, people, I, I will once in a while have someone say, oh, that's really cool that you named your bird Garuda. But most people I have to, I say, I didn't name her. Uh, and it's a cool name, but I have to explain it. Um, I think I want to say the Indonesian official, one of the Indonesian airlines or the official Indonesian airline is called Garuda Air. So <laughs> that makes sense with what the what the, the name means. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing you. Thanks for sharing all the information behind these. And again, thank you for all the quality releases over the last almost year since we last talked. It has been an incredible uh era to see the the growth for Fun City and to see these new partnerships crop up. I'm just like uh distantly proud to, to see <laughs> all the work that you're put in, and I'm I'm happy for you, and I hope that the the success has continued because it is something that is affecting the world in a very positive way. So thank you. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you. I mean, that's like the nicest thing anybody said to me. It's certainly at least in 2023, I think. So um, no, really uh, means that that's, uh, that's really heartening and, and uh, you know, just really, it's good to hear. I mean, it, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm excited for, you know, what's, what's to come and sharing it with you and everyone else. So thanks again for having me and um, let's do it again. Yeah, we absolutely will. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.